Ah, whoa, what is good guys? <laughs> Welcome back to I Love Basketball TV. Coach Steve here today. I'm giving you five exercises to increase your vertical jump. Let's get into it. Welcome back to I Love Basketball TV. If you're new here, subscribe, hit that notification bell because we do new videos every single week, ball handling, shooting, and with your boy, vertical jump. And I want you guys to be doing the dunking, as I say, and not getting dunked on. So subscribe, let's go. All right, I wanted to keep these exercises ones you can do from home, you can do anywhere, but I'm gonna try to tell you some little advanced techniques so you can really keep adding to them if you have a court, if you have workouts and weights. But the first one, very simple, is the standstill vertical jump, and you're just gonna stand still and jump, right? But what I want you to focus on is when you're doing this, I want you to get a full warm up. I want you to feel good. And then I want you to really focus on using the correct muscle. So I'm gonna give you a quick tips on how to do it. When you're running, right? You're using a lot of speed and you're, you're taking off quick, right? So we're lowering down off the penultimate step and then taking off. And we're not gonna lower as low as we go on a standstill jump because we're using momentum. We don't need to lower as much. That lowering is a little quicker, right? Everybody's a little bit different, but when it comes to a standstill jump, we don't have any momentum. So for me, I had to learn how to get even lower because I wanted to just go quick, but I wasn't utilizing my power. So lower yourself down and really take off, okay? And when you lower down, I want you to really feel your feet firm on the ground. I don't want you to fall back on your heels. I don't want you to fall on your toes like this. I want you to feel solid. I want you to feel your booty doing some work. Keep your eyes and chin up the whole time and thrust up, okay? So you don't need to go slow on the way down, but you also don't need to go super fast, okay? I want it to be gradually getting faster the whole time. So think about really loading up and jumping. Let's see if I get the rim. See what I got here? Not really fully warm, but boom, almost. Okay, so point is, I want you to really thrust up, use your whole body, come down low like this, use your glutes, use everything, and really power up, get low, boom and thrust up. Again, I don't want you pausing at the bottom, but I don't want you going too fast where you're not using some load. And so for these standstill jumps, try to do about 10. You'll see how taxing they are. And because we're trying to increase our vertical, I don't want you to just jump, land, and get right back into it. I wear this whoop band to get my heart rate, but you guys can just count your breaths. You can feel when your heart rate starts to lower because explosive activity jacks your heart rate up. And then when it starts to drop, you'll also feel your adrenaline go up. So I start to notice like, I'm a little out of breath. I want to go attack the rim because I'm having fun. But then when I wait a couple minutes, usually about one to two minutes in between jumps, I notice I feel like I'm in attack mode. I'm like, let's freaking go. So notice that in yourself, take about a minute to two between jumps, do about 10 standstill jumps. And that's the first exercise. The next exercise is the drop step. I love this one because it helps me perfect my technique because when you're running full speed, when you're adding more steps, there's a lot more components, but this is almost the most important. So we started with the standstill, which is just your takeoff, and now we're gonna add a drop step. I don't like to say one step because I call my one step, one step, and then the penultimate. So the drop step or the penultimate jump is just the drop step like this. So if this is right, left, we're just taking a penultimate step, boom. And again, you see me a little twisted just because I like that feeling of using as much power as I can, and I'm doing that on purpose. I just like this feeling, and I feel like it trains the hips opening and really driving into that thing. So what you wanna do is just breathe. You can even go like this, but definitely not straight on the rim because we never just take off like this, right? So if you're not comfortable completely sideways, I would say a little bit of an angle like this, and just take off. Boom. Right, And the goal here is push off as hard as you can off that back leg and plant as fast as you can. So speed and power is the goal and just see how high you can go and go as fast as you can because a lot of times we have a lot of speed and I see a lot of people not utilizing that speed in their penultimate and takeoff. They're going so fast, but then their penultimate and their takeoff can't handle that speed. So I want you to train that specific motion, the translation between the speed and that by just using that one step. Okay, and the other thing is use the left, right. So use both plants, boom. And if you're talking about one foot, you could do the same thing. So if I'm jumping off my left leg like this, I can just push off my right leg. So just take, a, take one step and that's it. So one foot, right? So the point is one step or just a penultimate step and train that because a lot of times I see so many people that wanna run fast, they wanna do their max jump, but their body, their penultimate, their takeoff can't handle all that speed. Train that just like the standstill. Take a minute or two between each jump. Push yourself 
focus on the eyes up, the chin up, and planting the feet hard, and planting them balanced, and also taking off quickly. So I don't want you to just say, take off super, and just go. I want you to do all those things, and if you can't go as fast as you can without breaking form, form first, and then add some speed, add some intensity, and go for it. Boom! All right, guys, so this next one is a very technique-specific exercise that I love called the single leg deadlift. We know the deadlift is like this, and you don't need weights for this. I like to just use something to hold onto to help my form, and I would prefer if you had something sturdy like this so it keeps your arms together. It's a weird stick. You could use a dumbbell. You could use a rope. You could use anything around your house to do this. You can even just use your hands like this and not use it, but the point is I want your arms flexed. So what the single leg deadlift is, is you're gonna keep one leg up in the air, right? You can start with your knee up like this, right? And then just lean forwards. And I want you to think about pushing your butt back. So it's not just leaning forwards like this, and it's not just bending, right? I want you to think about keeping a slight knee bend and leaning forwards and reaching for the ground, keeping your neck and your head neutral. Core tight, butt engaged, right? So you're pushing this out. I don't want you to flare out like this. You don't want like this. You want it tight, but you do want to push your butt back. I know there's a lot of different cues. That's why we make this video so you can kind of remember them and practice them. And that's why I want you to do this exercise because there's so many different things. And if you could do it right and push it back, slowly reach down. You should feel it in your hamstring and your glute a lot. And you can come up once you get the motion down, right down the knee, drive up, right? So once you get the motion down and you keep this driving down your knee, you're, if you're holding nothing, just keep your arms close to your body. That should go straight down like this, right? Kick this leg up. Again, keep these hips square, because for me, my body wants to twist like this, or it wants to twist like this. Try to notice in keeping these hips square, and once you get this motion, you can touch the floor, whew, and you could drive up, and when you drive up, I'm not gonna use that, when you drive up, again, you don't need to touch the floor, but when you come down, keep your back up. So if you can't reach the floor, just go to here. I really want you to focus on this butt and feeling this motion, and when you come up, whew, come up and flex that butt in. That's what we're training. That's that explosiveness, because when you're jumping, boom, it's the same movement. So if we can get in tune with the hamstrings and the butt, you're gonna really get some good range of motion in there. You're gonna get some good strength. And again, if you have access, if you have good stability, if you have everything in line, you can add dumbbells to this and start using some weight. Boom. But if not, it's a great exercise to train and, and learn your body, and you can do the other leg. So if you go like this, and go to where you can go. So for me, this leg is a lot tighter right now, so I feel it already a ton in this hamstring. Keep the back up, core tight so you're not flaring, but you wanna keep that butt out, stick it out. And that's a single leg deadlift. The next one is the squat, the basic squat, and I want you guys to use this as a form uh, fix as well. So you could use a stick, you can use just your hands like this, and just squat, I don't even put this between my legs, but you know what I mean, you could just use your hands, but what I like about this is I have something to hold on to like this. Feet a little wider than uh, shoulder width apart and slowly, first thing you wanna do is drop the butt back, okay? Again, we're not flaring like this. Keep the core tight, but stick the butt out like you're sitting on a chair and slowly drop it down. But think about pushing your butt onto a chair and just come down to where you can go. I feel it in my hips already. And if that's where you can go, that's okay but go as deep as you can. It's great to record yourself from the side because the second you, you go too low and your back starts to go like that, that's what I don't want. So go to where your back doesn't go, your butt is still out, and that's where you can go. You can do reps right in there. And it's great to have a weight because you can help the weight push you down f further than you can go. But again, another big key is when you're doing this, push your, your knees out. See, I'm pushing my knees out. You'll feel it in your groin, you'll feel it in your hips more. You're thinking about spreading the floor, like you're trying to spread the floor apart, and that will help you open those hips, which I'm working on a lot these days, and get lower into the squat. And you could do a lot of reps in that. Notice where it feels. And the more you get into those hips, the more you open them, the more strength you have in those hips, the more your running motions will be fluid and strong. So do those squats, do a bunch of reps, focus on range and depth first, so you can just hold it at this spot to really build that range. Again, don't let your feet come off the ground too much. Try to keep them planted and hold it. And just do reps in that range. You should feel it in your butt, feel it in your quads, feel it in your hamstrings, everywhere. So push yourself to go deep first. Once you're warm, you could do reps and you could also add a little speed. So once you're feeling good, whoom, same thing. Whoom, come up, explosive, and work on that. Push yourself. 
So this next one is a lot of fun. I call it speed kicks. You're gonna lean on a wall, right? And you see the difference between my butt out and my butt in. You're gonna wanna keep it in. Again, core tight because a lot of times we don't wanna curl our back like that. So butt in, core tight. And I'm giving you these details because this is what it takes. And you're gonna lift one leg up like this and kick it back, okay? And you're gonna drive it back up fast, right? So what I want you to do though, is have a good position where your heels are on the ground, your butt's tight, you're leaning on the wall, and you're gonna lift one knee up. And in that one, whew, you just wanna graze the ground and kick it fast. This is gonna train those muscles to really drive, right? But I don't want you to lose your back. I want you to just think about keeping it tight like this. Whew. And those are killer to really activate the hamstrings and glutes. That's what we're gonna be pushing off of, right? And driving it. So a lot of these exercises when you're running, we're using all these muscles and now by eliminating one of the legs and not really pushing off the ground, we're training just the, the motion of this circle, right? And that's fantastic for our, our speed and our athleticism. So in the other leg, like this, again, a slight knee, a slight lean on the wall, bring the knee up, make sure you're tight here, make sure you're tight here. I'm gonna use the other leg tight here. Bring this knee up as high as you can. Keep this butt tight, core tight, lean on the wall. It's okay if you miss the ground, but you wanna just graze it and drive it up as fast as you can. Feeling it firing my hip feels fantastic, training this hip. And even though it's similar to running, when you're running, you're hitting your hips, but you're using so many other muscles, this helps isolate it. So try those speed kicks, do about 10 each leg, nonstop as fast as you can and then do about three sets of those, I think you will feel a killer burn and you'll be faster for it. All right guys, go try those out and remember, push yourself, do it the hard way. Don't just try to do it the fastest. Don't just try to do it the most explosive you possibly can. Do it the right way first. Earn those little ranges of motion. Earn every ounce of progress. The more you do that, the more details you work on, the better you will be as an athlete, the higher you will jump. Comment any questions you have, let us know what you think about this one, and I'll see you next week. Let's go. On a road, here we go.